Hello everyone, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I would like to show an, a video about X-forming curves. And so I'm going to um, use it to do this little sharp fin, if you will. When I create curves, that by default they go on the XY plane. So I'm turning my view so I can see a plan view of the XY plane and going into curve and here's the arc command and with the arc command I could put on full circle and when I select a center point and I pull that um, out um, I could then put in a radius so I'm going to put in a radius of five enter and so it makes a uh, 10 inch diameter circle next I'm going to uh, trim that circle and I need a line segment out here and a line segment out here and I'm going to go into the trim command and I'm going to select the portion that I want to keep. I'm going to select the trim entities. Say okay. So now I have the circle trimmed the way I want it. And then as you can see in the edit curve function, I have X form. And I'm going to select that curve that I want to X form. It says it's going to remove the parameters and it gives me a number of segments that I can play around with. I like maybe a few more to do my fin shape the way I want. And I'm going to X form. Now when I X form, I want to use the plane option and I want to select an inferred, inferred plane of the XY plane. So as I pull these uh, knot points, they're staying all in the same plane. And that's going to be important. So I get a nice controlled shape for my shark fin. Now, this shark fin uh, is basically has an elliptical cross section. So now I'm going to go to the sketch command and I'm going to select a plane on which to sketch and I'm going to select the ellipse. I'm going to make an ellipse that looks like that. And I'm going to put the uh, major axis as five. Um, there we go. And I'm going to select the minor axis as something pretty thin like one or maybe 1.5 there we go and say okay i'm going to put a constraint on that ellipse of horizontal you can see there's a degree of freedom for the ellipse it can rotate about the axis but when i put the horizontal constraint on it it can no longer do that and i'm going to use the point on curve constraint to make sure that the ellipse is controlled by the endpoints of the original curve that has been X-formed. Okay, great. So now I have this construction geometry. Let's just hide that. And this is what I want to make a fin out of. Well, in order to proceed, I need a sketch. Um, for a reason that will become obvious in just a moment, I'm going to put a little line segment right there. I'm doing it by eye. And now I'm going to go to the surface command and I'm going to do a sweep. Now, the reason why I put this line segment here is because I want a separate curve this way and a separate curve that way. And so I'm going to select now the section. There's a section. And I'm going to select a guide curve with stop at intersection. Stop at intersection allows me to select this um, curve that I've made and X formed. And it only selects that much. And as you can see, it's pushing that up that way. And then I say, uh, add new guide, and I'm selecting um, this other one. And as you can see, it makes a shark fin, just like that. That's really nice. However, right here, there's some weirdness. It's uh, self-intersecting and weird and messed up. And that's okay, because now I'm going to do a little microsurgery. I'm going to put another sketch. I'm going to put another sketch that just looks like this perpendicular to this line segment the original line segment it goes up like that and that little curve is going to be used to do an extrusion like that and i'm going to do a trim trim body could have done this as i extruded but i'm using multiple operations here okay so now what i've done is i've chopped off the bad part 
it's like when you have bread that stays around too long and there's a little white spot on it. I personally don't throw it away. I just chop that off and eat it anyway. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have revealed that anyway. Um, <laughs> my next step is to create a, uh, I like the end-sided surface for closing these little, these little pain in the neck uh, uh, anomalies. So the end-sided surface, I can select the edge of that surface with the trim to boundary on. And then I can say constraint faces. I'll select that as the constraint face. And there we go. We've got a nice little surface that uh, closes that gap. It doesn't really close the gap because it is indeed a surface that is now on top of the solid. But it does follow that original, original curve very nicely. It's got a G1 curvature continuity. Um, and... What I need to do now is fill that in with actual solid material. And so I can use the patch command. And the patch command is here. Patch, it says, modifies a solid or sheet body by replacing faces with faces of another sheet. So I'm going to select the body. I'm going to select the tool, the sheet tool. I'm going to flip that vector around and say, okay. And what you get is something that's pretty nice if i go to display and take off ed face edges you can see now that if i take away the curves coordinate systems that that is pretty awesome look at that it's so nice and it is all one piece as you can see all right take a cross section of it and so there the x form gives you a sculpting ability and uh, used with the other tools that I think is superb. And uh, when I submit this to my injection molder or, you know, however, however I'm going to, maybe I would make a mold of this and I would fill it with foam or whatever. Maybe it's a fin on a surfboard like that. Um, this would be smooth enough and, you know, end up probably benching the mold a little bit so this is really not going to um it's not going to hurt it's not going to show in any negative way in the real life part that would be created from this model so it's a valid technique um thank you very much for watching these techniques are really powerful and i'm glad that so many of my user community uh, watches these and um if you enjoyed this and appreciated it Please comment, please like, um, please continue to support us. We've had amazing support from you, the amazing CAD users out online. And thank you very much. Again, this is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and it's a, a real privilege. Thank you.